Well, good morning. It's a little Monday morning flea, born, flea bay edition here. And I was going through stuff yesterday and I was going to do this, but uh, I was um, busy working on another project all day, Sunday, another little shop project, little foundry project that I'll share with you here before too long. It's in edit right now. But I thought we'd go through this because there is a um, few things that I've noticed that are kind of changing with sellers on the auction site. And I've also gotten a couple reports back on from people that have ordered some parts from Clausing. So we can kind of compare what Clausing is charging for stuff or what they were charging for stuff and uh, what things are being sold for that uh, I'm assuming these sellers are getting and reselling would be what it looks like to me because they're advertised as original equipment manufacturers. So as I've said before, they'd have to come from closing. So just starting to go through, and this is stuff that I looked at yesterday basically. This is just new listings. Now I've not completely taken the time to go through um, old listings and I normally go through Atlas Mill Shapers and Lays stuff is kind of what I look at for what I'm sharing with you guys. Now, as I look at milling machine stuff, um, this new old stock milling machine oil pan, an S7107, this has been here listed, or this has been listed on here before, $69.15.50 .50 shipping. It's on a bid auction, it's on an auction. Um, it's not a buy it now. I'm actually surprised that this is still on here because for what they normally go for or when they do appear, which is not very often, and even compared to my reproduction, why this is a good buy. So I'm kind of surprised this one's still here, but that's the way it is. Um, Marvin Milling Machine, the slotting attachment, this has been on here $3,000. Um, it's been listed several times before for the same price. I think that's outrageous myself, you know. In all honesty, you don't see hardly any of these, although there's a lot of information out about these, and I think these could be reproduced with a little bit of work. Um, that may be a giveaway down the road, but anyway, um, three thousand dollars. I think that's way too much. You know, I think it's a it's a neat little item. It's going to see very limited use on your milling machine, um, although it is an option. But there's other ways you can do that. You can cut your slots or keyways a whole lot less expensive than you can. Um, with the Marvin machine, so it's kind of a novelty, I guess. You know, they they produce them and the and the vertical head. The you see the reproduction vertical heads out there, and I think something could be done with this. In reality, in my mind, and this is just strictly my opinion, a um, the slotting attachment it should be about an eight hundred dollar attachment, probably is I think what they should be, but. Then again, I'm not buying one anyway, so, you know, it's what the market will bear. So, going on, I don't really see anything. There's still a lot of milling attachments that have been listed over the last few days. Um, I'll go on down here in a little bit. And we've, well, we've just finished rebuild, or just finished building a drawbar. You know, the same ones on here for $100, which is ridiculous. I've still got that pre-order will be up for another, what, week or 10 days, something like that. But then I'll have those listed on the website. Hanger counter shaft assembly, $224.99 and $82.35 shipping. So you're into it. $300. Um, not to me. Um, there's, we can go on through there, but there's nothing that really interests me. Now as we look at lathe stuff, uh, there's a bunch of Chucks listed here or right off the bat that have just been listed either last night or this morning. Um, 200 plus dollars, you know, three draw scroll chucks. There's a four jaw chuck. I personally will not give that much for a standard size chuck that's used. You know, you can you can buy a new import chuck probably for half the price, I'm guessing. I haven't looked recently. Um, and while we're not real fans of import stuff here, why you're going to get the same usability as out of those as you are a used three jaw scroll chuck, you know, four jaw chucks probably a little more versatile in the respect that they're not gonna they're not going to lose their center like a three jaw scroll chuck will. The jaws aren't gonna be damaged to the extent to where it's not not going to be usable, but nonetheless that, to me that's not a, a real good buy. Now what I've noticed on a lot of things here is prices seem to have come down on quite a few parts. 
Um, so I think we're making a difference here with making Atlas machines affordable again. And I think if we all kind of look at it from that perspective, I think prices will continue to come down at least to a certain degree. Um, what I'm seeing as much, if not more than just that, is the fact that I think these, these parts are being listed a little more honestly. I'm not seeing nearly as many listings that say excellent condition because as I've said before, they're not excellent condition. I'm seeing a lot more that say nice original condition, which at least may be more accurate. Um, I think there's still room for improvement and if anyone thinks that this little series is going to go away, I'm, I go back and forth. I think, you know, I don't want to be negative about stuff. By the same token, I think we are making a difference and um, I'm beginning to have a little fun here just because I'm seeing I'm seeing the listings change, and I've actually got um, a couple of private emails that we're gonna we're gonna kind of call hate mail, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. That's part of the territory, and um, that's just the way it is. You know, um, I see a well. Here's a new listing. There's a lot of gears being listed here, and they're not necessarily Atlas gears. You know, they're listed uh, so they fall under that heading. So. If you get sucked into the fact that it's going to fit your Atlas because they've listed them as Atlas and Logan and South Bend and whatever the case may be, be real careful when you're buying gears. You know, they're, um, they're again, a lot of this stuff is not proprietary even through the other machines. You know, they're still a standard degree or a, a standard gear. Um, most of the older machines are going to be a 14 and a half degree pressure angle and there's, there's gears that are going to be available that either are off-the-shelf components or can be retrofitted to a specific lathe and have a perfectly functional gear or whatever the case may be. Um, as I look down here there's a 10-12 inch countershaft hanger 921 and pin and hardware. It's on an auction, $15.95 shipping, but it's starting at $22.95. Um, I think that we would have seen those listed at um, quite a bit higher price before and I could be wrong you know there's some this seller's been around a little bit it's not one that I've really noticed here lately so he may have been here and just not listed anything for a while or it hasn't hit my radar and um, you know maybe he's a little more has a little more um, moral integrity shall we say here's a 10 inch headstock Atlas Craftsman 10 inch lathe, full headstock assembly with back gear assembly and cover. Now it's a complete setup starting at $199, $130.40 shipping which is pretty much out of line but nonetheless, and I'm not going to spend too much time on these things but um, there again, seller that's been around a little while, not a whole lot of time. Um, what does it say? came off of a running lathe that was being parted out. Well, you should be ashamed of yourself for taking a running lathe and parting it out. Yeah, dumbass. Um, it works as is, but could use a cleaning. There's some built-up grease on the gears, but none of the gear teeth are broken or damaged anyway. They're all in very good condition. Um, the toggle switch is not tested as it was wired to a furnace switch. Please check out the pictures as part of the description. So, I glanced at this on my iPad earlier, but I haven't looked at it real close. So let's, let's take a look. There's a couple of things that I noticed about it. And the first thing is that it's got a link belt on it. And link belts, this is a Timkey bearing headstock. Link belts, I'm not a fan of. And I've had a couple machines come through with link belts on them. I jerk them off and put real belts back on them. Now, some guys are going to say that's the way to do it. Use a link belt. They're easier to change. They run just as good. They're just as excellent type of thing. Um, my opinion is they're not. When you look at some of the older maintenance manuals or repair manuals for machines, a lot of the times, if they mention a link belt, they're designed as a repair until a proper belt can be reinstalled on a machine. So if you're in a production environment as they, so, and this is not necessarily directed just at Atlas, but if it was in a production environment in a factory someplace or something, rather than have downtime if a belt breaks or is damaged or something 
you know, goes awry to where you have to change it. A temporary repair was to put a link belt on it, and then when shift was over, machine was down, whatever the case may be, why then the a proper replacement belt was installed, and the you know took the time to or you took the time to do that at that point in time. So, in my opinion, and there again, my opinion, and there's a lot of discussion about this because a lot of guys are putting link belts on equipment. Um, in my opinion, it's a temporary fix. I do not like a link belt. I'd rather pull the machines down, put a proper belt on, and move on in life. Um, oftentimes, you will see a machine that has a had a link belt run on it for a period of time, and you will see um, markings in the pulleys where it's actually worn down in. Um, and I haven't noticed that to be the case with actual belts to the extent that I've seen it with a link belt. Now maybe some of the newer link belts are better, um, maybe they work fine, I'm not a fan, I'm not going to do it. Anyway, the, the gist of it is this machine or this headstock has a link belt on it. Um, so to me that's kind of a downside. Um, the headstock doesn't look bad, the paint's all chipped off of it, it's grungy like you'd expect to see on a, on a 50, 60 year old machine. Um, and this link belt's one of the earlier black link belts that's all wadded up, it's a heavy fiber. So, um, and if you look at the pulley there is some markings on it, especially on the lower gear, or the, the smaller diameter on that four step pulley. So. Um, link belts I'm not just not a fan of so that's the key that's the way that is um, the rest of the headstock looks okay it's a used headstock you know it, it, I don't know I there again my feeling is this machine's being parted out if it's being parted out either it's a piece of crap or else somebody's doing a sin by parting out a perfectly good machine it's got the covers and everything, you know, to spend 300 and some dollars, they've got $130 shipping on it. To spend that much on it, I wouldn't do it. If you, if you need a complete headstock, you've got worse problems. Now, one of the other things that I did notice with this headstock is it shows a picture of the bore, and when you look down in there, it's, it looks dark to me. Um, I see some markings in there that may or not be may or may not be a indication of how this machine has been used and abused. Now the other thing that I see is when you look at the picture that shows down the, down the center of the bore, if you also look at the main bull gear that's got the index holes on it, you can see quite a few markings and a little bit of ovaling of those holes where that index pin has been um, in and out repeatedly and, and it's it's been well used so something to keep in mind you know I'm not gonna say it's a bad headstock by any means but I don't know that it's a good deal so going on down rare lathe or 10 inch lathe rare turret tail stock with base casting um, there's no ram in it there's no whether it was the single stage um, tailstock or the single bore or if it was uh, the sixth position like I've got on my production lathe all you've got is the base casting so what good is that another $67 shipping that's yeah, kind of a that's kind of a ripoff um, brand new equivalent decimal equivalent charts um, these have been on here for quite a while 40 bucks is what they end up being and usually about shipping this one's on an auction so it's a little bit less than shipping so um, these are reprints you know these are all reprints there again if you go and buy a poster it should be a $15 poster and I've looked at these I've done quite a bit of um, work on reproduction manuals and stuff prior and I have a tremendous amount of reproduction manuals that I haven't loaded on the website and haven't really talked about lately um, there's a story there as there is with everything else but um, I have at least some of these charts if not all they're a little bit oversized so I don't have print capabilities in-house at this point in time to reproduce those um, I, I think 
you know, if you've got to have one, why that's what you're going to find. We used to see originals around, and I have some originals. Um, but just for a reproduction, I, I think that's yeah, my opinion. Um, forward 10 inch Atlas lathe, forward reverse gearbox assembly, pre owned, $275.15 something shipping. Um, no, that's a, that's a rip. That's a rip. You know, and this one's been used and abused. The, the gears look okay in a gears shifter. Um, I don't see any real excessive damage on the gears, but nonetheless, um, that, that's too much money. You know, that's just literally too much money. Now here we're getting into a couple that do intrigue me. New OEM Atlas Craftsman 912 inch lathe, 10 428 motor, twin V pulley, brand new. Um, and there again, new OEM, $129.99 and $8 shipping. That, if it is originally OEM, it would have been produced by Clausing. I would suggest you call Clausing if you need one of those before you spend that much money. I have seen, I'm looking here for a couple more couple more things. Um, there's one of them right there. I've gotten some reports back from a few people of, that have called Clausing or have ordered parts from Clausing. Now we had a discussion and I don't know, I, you know, I've been on the, I've been on the um, bandwagon about not putting used bearings back in your machine and I do honestly believe that. I uh, had a gentleman that he and I emailed back and forth a little bit and he contacted Clausing about some headstock bearings for I believe it was a 10 inch lathe. Um, now I've already shown that you can do relatively well by shopping for the um, milling machine bearings. You can, you can do pretty good buying them. Um, he called about his lathe and I believe it was a 10 inch and I could be wrong and the price was outrageous for closing. It was, it was in the neighborhood of $500, um, which is way too much to put in a set of bearings in a Atlas 10 inch lathe or an Atlas 12 inch lathe. Now, in Clausing's defense, I still have not been able to actually cross-reference the Tim Key number, so I don't know exactly which bearings those are. Their price for, for putting bearings back in was way out of, way out of price range of 99% of us and I wouldn't spend that much on a little atlas lathe anyway. Now in their defense I do not know the tolerances of those bearings. Those may be a high tolerance bearing and that's what I would be expecting to put in a precision lathe, one of the larger precision lathes. Depending on what tolerances they were that may be the going rate for those bearings but there again I wouldn't put that high tolerance of bearing if that is the case back into an atlas lathe. So my two cents. Now I also had another gentleman that had, and this was comments left on the channel, and he has a later 12 inch commercial. And, and I do very, you know, I don't do anything with the commercial stuff. It's, that's later model stuff, and I've not delved into that at all. So I'm, I lack knowledge in that area. And, and I don't know exactly when he ordered this, so this may be older pricing, but it shows that it is worth checking. Uh, ordered new half nut assemblies, which is the 10F-12. Now that is a, the 10F is a 10 inch number, so they've used that on the commercials too. Um, Twenty dollars. So when you look at those here on the auction site, I believe those are in the sixty dollar range, fifty, sixty, seventy dollar range, something like that. And if we go on through, we may find a set here. So big savings there. And I said before that these sellers on Fleave are are marking them up. They've got to get them from someplace, and if they're OEM, they've got to get them from Clausing. So um, that's you know that's a big difference. That's they're more than doubling their money there, and that may very well be the norm for what these sellers are selling them for. Um, new nuts for the cross slide and compound. Now these numbers I don't recognize, so I'm assuming they are a 12-inch commercial model uh, number. But new nuts for cross slide and compound would be the 537-041, $38. Now that's comparable to what you see replacement brass nuts being sold for on, 
on the auction site. So maybe they're a little there. Normally you see them at about $40. And the 537-040 for $22. Well, that's a big savings over over what anybody else is building. So um, total shipped was $91. So, and he goes on to say, see sellers on eBay listing uh, half and that's new for about $50. Um, one guy sells all three remanufactured from brass for $125 plus shipping and handling. So that's um, that's a big difference. So if we go on the assumption on a lot of these parts that they're doubling the price of them to sell them on the auction site, you're gonna you're gonna have quite a savings if you go to directly to closing. And you know, there's a couple of different ways of looking at it. One is you might say, well, you know, these sellers are providing a service by offering a replacement part that we might not be able to find any place else, or they've got a variety of stuff, so we might want to support them to do it. By the same token, we probably definitely want to support Clausing if they're willing to support us with prints for stuff that they no longer produce, if they want to supply us with parts that they do produce at a reasonable price. So. Um, I'm going to go to closing first if I if I'm not producing stuff in house for myself, and that's what we're going to do. So um, as I go on down here, new OEM factory part Atlas Craftsman nine to twelve inch lathe nine dash one hundred one dash forty eight A change gear, brand new, thirty nine ninety nine and eight dollars shipping. Well, if we go under the assumption that maybe they're doubling their money, why that's a twenty dollar part from closing. So I think we better be. Uh, we better be careful about who we're buying from. So that's, that's my little rant for the day. Um, I don't know that I've got a whole lot else for you. Um, I just found that interesting. Listing wise, I'm seeing a whole lot of stuff that's, that from the same sellers that I've kind of been complaining about or that I've talked about that are, are uh, listing all their stuff as in excellent condition. Now I'm seeing a lot of stuff that um, very nice original. I'm just looking at headings. I'm not delving into these. Um, 101, 618, 109, 6 inch length, 54 tooth change gear. 1799 plus 435. Now, here over the last six months, I've not seen a change gear under $20. So that's, you know, normally they're 25 or 30. Now, if we go down, and this is from a, this is from a seller that has been around. Got quite a bit of feedback here, um, and it's the description now. Instead of being excellent, is as shown in overall good use condition with some minor tooth wear. So that at least is quite a bit more honest listing about the condition of these of this part. Um, so that's what we're striving for: is a little bit more honest. Okay, now here's one. 10 inch, 12 inch, lay saddle, part number 10F-9, rare large dial. Fairly new seller, part now machines. Um, as far as I know, Atlas did not offer a large dial. The large dial assemblies have been a shop built stuff and there's been a couple little new part manufacturers that have made large dial or large dial conversions for all the machines because as we get older we don't see so we need a larger dial and you know we know the story there so that I believe is what's on this head or on this saddle um, the spacer looks newly manufactured the dial is a larger dial that is looks to be CNC engraved it's it's done quite nicely and it's got an aftermarket handle on it so um, there again we are with the rare. I don't know that it's really rare, it's just something that someone else has done that we can do in our own shops. So there we go. Uh, $197, I, I think that's too much, you know. Um, saddle castings, $7,500, maybe a hundred and a quarter. I'm not going to give any more than that. And the the thing that makes it so rare with this large dial, that's crap. So. Anyway, I just found it interesting. Now, here's a pair of Atlas 10, 12 inch lathe, 22 threading change gears, $16.99 and $3.99 shipping. Worn, it says right in the, right in the heading. 
So, and this is a seller that's been around, that's been parting out machines. And um, I would have expected a listing to say in excellent condition here two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever the case may be. And these are definitely worn. You know, if you look at them, there's a lot of wear on, especially one of the gears. Um, one side of it's pretty well worn. But I think we're getting, you know, they're willing to sell the pair of, what's the description say? The, uh, the disclosure, these are worn but have no missing or damaged teeth. They can be used. Condition is used. And depending on what you want to consider worn as opposed to damaged, you know, when you get a third of the way worn through one, one side of the teeth, is that worn or is that damaged? Anyway, nonetheless, at least it's listed halfway accurately and the price reflects that. So, I think we're doing something good. Anyway, hopefully you find this a little bit interesting. Hopefully you find it helpful. And um, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button and this interests you along with some of the reproduction parts that I'm doing and some of the machine tool stuff and everything else I do here in the shop as well as the foundry stuff, hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. Comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.